Welcome to Traditions, a hymn-based worship experience that embraces the richness of our historical traditions. Part of our tradition is the sharing of Holy Communion. So have some elements to represent the bread and juice for later in the service. We invite you to actively engage in this online worship by speaking words when prompted and to sing along with our gifted musicians. If you're participating in one of our live stream platforms, I hope you'll connect with others through the chat feature, request a prayer if needed, and make a financial gift whenever the Spirit moves you. Now, as we come to worship today, I ask you to join me in a moment of silent prayer and reflection as our nation continues to heal from the recent events of violence and division in our capital. Healing of this sort must begin in our own hearts with a quick readiness to answer the call of Christ in loving God, loving neighbor as ourselves. So let us bow in reverent silence together. Amen. Our response of prayer for today is a prayer for peace. Following each of my prompts, I invite you to speak along with me the response, shine your light among us, God. Let us pray. Light of Christ, awaken us this hour to the glory of your presence in our midst. Shine your light among us, God. Shine among us in such a way that the darkness without and within may be pushed back such that we might truly see what is real. Shine your light among us, O oh God. Help us to recognize our brokenness for what it is. Enable us to behold the world as you created it to be and as you created us to be. And empower us to move from darkness to light and from brokenness to new life. Shine your light among us, O oh God. May your light within us shine through into worship this day and in all our days. This we pray in the name of the word made flesh, the light which is the light of all people, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Exodus in the 16th chapter, where we read about Moses and their departure from Egypt. They set out on the 15th day of the second month after they had left the land of Egypt. The whole Israelite community complained against Moses and Aaron in the desert. The Israelites said to them, Oh, how we wish that the Lord had just put us to death while we were still in the land of Egypt. There we could sit by the pots cooking meat and eat our fill of bread. Instead, you've brought us out into this desert to starve this whole assembly to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, 
I'm going to make bread rain down from the sky for you. The people will go out each day and gather just enough for that day. In this way, I'll test them to see whether or not they follow my instruction. In the morning there was on the desert surface thin flakes, as thin as frost on the ground. They didn't know what it was. Moses said to them, this is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. Collect as much of it as you can each eat per person, but don't keep any of it until the morning. But they didn't listen to Moses. Some kept part of it until morning, but it became infested with worms, and when the sun grew hot, it melted away. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Today we launch a brand new worship series called God's Waiting Room, which is a phrase that I am borrowing from Father Richard Rohr, a brilliant contemplative Franciscan priest who wrote these words on Thursday, July 7, 2016, words that hold more meaning now than ever before. He wrote, To get out of this unending cycle we call normalcy, we have to allow ourselves to be drawn into sacred space, into liminality. All transformation takes place here. There alone is our world left behind, while we are not yet sure of the new existence. This is the sacred space where the old world is able to fall apart and a bigger world is revealed. If we don't encounter liminal space in our lives, we start idealizing normalcy. The threshold is God's waiting room. Here we are taught openness and patience as we come to expect an appointment with the divine doctor. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, speak to us in these liminal days. Speak to us, O God, for your servants are listening. Amen. Richard Rohr's wish was that we would choose to enter into liminality, that time in between what was and what will be. But that was 2016, and this is 2021 and we remain stuck in the midst of a pandemic that has created the classic three experiences of change. First, separation, then liminality, and then reorientation or emergence. COVID-19 forced us apart from one another and into social distance and quarantine, the very definition of separation. Our reorientation and emergence hasn't yet begun but with the arrival of multiple vaccines and cases showing signs of, of slowing, we have hope. But we're stuck in the middle, neither here nor there, already and not yet. This is the spirit of liminal living. We're standing on a threshold of a door between what was and what will be. The word liminal comes from the Latin lemon, which means threshold the bottom part of a door that must be crossed when moving from one space to another. Liminality is the emotional space between the past and the future, the gap between the end of something and the start of something new. It's not where we live most of our lives, but it is a necessary passage from what has been to what is yet to be. Spiritually speaking, Richard Rohr would love for us to create liminal space in our lives every day, but that's not so easy. But we can look back on our lives. We can recognize liminal times of life when we stood on a threshold between old and new lives. Think about them. Transitions from one job to another. Pregnancies the days between cancer treatments and the next scan. And of course, something none of us would have ever expected, community-wide quarantine. The best metaphor I can offer is that of the airport. I used to enjoy flying because it meant I was going somewhere special, but I've never enjoyed the airport. The airport was always uncertainty. 
Where will I park? How long will the security line be? Will my gate assignment change? And who will I see that I know? Most frighteningly, who will be assigned to the seat right next to mine? All this adds up to our behaving differently than we normally might. At the airport, our pace picks up. We're, we're generally indifferent to the people around us. We don't roll so easily with small changes like gate assignments. And we settle into ambiguity, knowing that we have almost no control over most of the situation. Metaphorically speaking, the past several months have been spent living at the airport. By choice, by choice or by chance, most of our lives have changed. And so here we sit in a state of unpredictability, the likes of which we've never known in our lifetimes. What are we to do as this season of disruption continues with no clear estimated time of arrival? Well, as people of faith, we must seek for and find hope in the fact that this is nothing new. From Genesis to Revelation, our sacred scripture is full up with stories of people living through liminal times. Frustration, fear, and anger in time give way to faith. New people, new ideas, new practices, new understandings, even new life amidst death find fertile soil in the ambivalence of liminal time, just as it was for Moses and the Israelites. They had hardly been in the wilderness for six weeks when they started complaining about how good they had it back in Egypt, even enslaved, where at least their bellies were full. And when they weren't complaining about how much they missed the past, they would ask that question that framed our Christmas Eve message, are we there yet? The Israelites were living in a liminal time, but struggling to leave the past behind or fully imagine the future. This then is our challenge as well. Sitting in God's waiting room, waiting for an appointment with the divine doctor, what are we to do while we wait? Well, for today, I invite you to consider three important shifts that are uniquely possible during liminal times. Three shifts that are countercultural, counterintuitive, and counterclockwise, which is to say that they don't happen easily in the world around us, or in the world within us, or during typical times. That's why we need to consider them now, as we stand on a threshold of new life. In her book, How to Lead When You Don't Know Where You're Going, Susan Beaumont says that shift happens. That shift happens in three ways during liminal days. From knowing to unknowing, from advocating to attending, and from striving to surrender. But that shift happens only with our intentional choosing. The first shift that can happen then during liminal days is from knowing to unknowing. In 2019, I read three books that fundamentally changed how I view my role as a church leader. And each author, including Beaumont, was saying the same thing but in different ways. They were all suggesting that the future of mature pastoral leadership begins by saying, I don't know. This shift to unknowing is not so much about intellectual knowledge as it is about adaptive emotional capacity. And if this pandemic has taught all of us anything, it has taught us that we, the entire human race, we don't know it all. It's time to set our ego aside and get comfortable saying, I don't know. So where in your life has certainty and its sidekick arrogance taken hold of you? In what ways are you being dishonest with the world because you're being dishonest with yourself by pushing away honest inquiry and genuine exploration? Where would it make you most uncomfortable to say, I don't know? We'll start right there. The second shift is from advocating on one hand to attending on the other. 
This has to do with where we focus our primary attention. A few years ago, I went surfing with Rob Bell. It was part of a small group experience at one of his two-day conferences in Newport Beach. Now, I'll, I'll pause briefly to let the absurdity of the image of me surfing just settle into your mind. But I learned that it turns out that what matters most in learning to surf is not agility or balance or even the right wave. It's where to focus your attention. As surfers, we were told to keep our focus on the beach, not on the waves or the water or the board. Or as an old friend of mine likes to say, where we look is where we go. Advocating is right-handed pushiness towards some certain outcome, but attending is being radically present to the moment, to the next right step or goal without concern for the immediate challenges before us. So there, are there some things going on in your life or in your walk with Christ that seem to be harder than they should be? Are you finding resistance from others in places you never have before? Where and with whom can you simply attend to the here and now without being obsessed by the then and there? The third and final shift, I'll, I'll finish with this, is from striving to surrender. This centers on our need to control. I'll never forget the day my dad told my siblings and me that our mom had Alzheimer's. It was the start of a truly long and painful goodbye. But even more than that day, which was followed by years of striving to resist and fix and heal my mother of this dreadful disease, even more than that day, I remember the day when my dad finally surrendered to it. He, he never gave up, mind you, but with courage and commitment in his love for my mother, he kept showing up every day to do whatever was necessary. He surrendered to the reality of the situation, and everything changed for all of us. Surrender is not weakness or failure. It is the deep end of the spiritual swimming pool where we experience a powerful weightlessness that comes with submission. So scan the scenery of your life right now. What striving feels more like pushing a rope uphill to you? What striving is being met by middle-of-the-night wakefulness? Think of just one situation where the wisdom of surrender might just win the day. Friends, since last March, we've been saying in a lot of different ways that we are in this together, and it's true. But for a while, let's be more specific. We are in God's waiting room together. What we choose to do and not to do during this unique and liminal time has the potential to profoundly affect who we are as the emergence and the reorientation begins. Shift happens by God's grace and with the model of God's faithful people before us. Let's choose the shift that happens and let's participate in it from knowing to unknowing, from advocating to attending, and from striving to surrender. Next week, in God's waiting room, we'll see the value in the future of telling our stories from the past. Amen.
We come to the time in our service now where we gather around the table of grace. At Wyzetta Community Church, we believe that this is the largest, most inclusive table in the world, a table at which is set a seat for all people of all time. You're invited, but you must come not as you think you ought to be, but just as you are. So come to this table to remember. To remember that on the night of his betrayal and on the eve of his death, gathered in an upper room with his closest followers and friends, Jesus took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he held it out to them and he said, take, eat, all of you, in remembrance of me. And likewise, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he said, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out for all. Do this also in remembrance of me. And as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the hope we have in Christ again and again. Let us pray. God, thank you for the gift of the most simple elements for the bread and the cup, that they are a daily reminder of your love for us. We pray that you will bless us in ways that allow us to bless each other. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We invite you now to share these elements in your home with the people you're worshiping with. Please join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, thank you for this moment. Thank you for these days. Thank you for this liminal space that we are living in right now. Although we are more comfortable when we have all the answers, we know, God, that not having all the answers builds our trust in you. So help us to stay focused on where we are going, on the big picture of serving you, serving others, loving you and loving our neighbors. God, lead us, we pray, in this time to lean more deeply into our faith as we seek to serve the world, as we seek to follow you, and as we seek to bring light to the world. We pray, O oh God, that you would fill us now with your Holy Spirit as together we pray the prayer your Son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Be thou mine in heaven. 
We are so grateful for your presence today and hope that you have been blessed by setting aside this time to worship God. If you're searching for a faith community to call home, we have two online information classes, Sunday, January 10th at 4.30 p.m. and Monday, January 11th at 6.30 p.m. You can choose either time. Just call the church or email Reverend Danielle Jones for details or click the link in the chat bar now. If WCC is already your faith community, consider inviting a friend or a neighbor or a coworker to come see what God is doing through us. A personal invitation from you might just change someone's life forever. So go now into the world, but don't let the world around you squeeze you into its mold, but let God remake you from within. As you embrace liminality and the shifts from knowing to unknowing, from advocating to attending, and from striving to surrender. For what does the Lord require of us but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God? Amen. <laughs>